Welcome to the end of COVID week. We've got a lot to get to in this video from an update to boosters to immunity, so let's jump right in. If you're a veteran of this channel, welcome back. If not, hello. My name is Mike, I'm a doctor, and I recently got diagnosed with COVID. One of the pillars of my medical training is open and transparent communication, and that's what I've done over the past week, trying to give you guys a small glimpse into what I've been going through with COVID, what I feel about some studies, and just my general gestalt of the whole thing. Now that that's out of the way, here's a bit of a recap. The first two days I had symptoms, I thought they were allergies. I usually get allergies this time of year, so I figured, sure, why not? Day two, towards the end of the day, I thought the allergies were laying on a bit thick, and then day three, I woke up feeling like absolute hell. So I went and got tested with the two over-the-counter tests. They were both positive, my PCR, came back positive the day after, early on day four. Waking up on day five, it's been a slow and steady improvement ever since. Because I'm a type one diabetic and I'm high risk, I went and got the Regeneron infusion on day five. I'm not sure how much it helped, if it helped at all, but I can tell you that I didn't go to the hospital and I didn't get worse. Whether it was my body or it was the drug or the combination of the two, we'll never know, but because I'm high risk and that's a treatment option, I went and got it. If you wanna learn more about that experience, you can watch the video that's up here or in the comments if I pointed the wrong spot. But like I said, there have been small daily improvements. As you can probably hear, I still kind of have a head cold, but the myalgias are gone, the fatigue is gone, I never had any brain fog, the small headaches, they're long gone. I feel pretty good. On day eight of symptoms, I got a phone call from the occupational health at my work. They asked me a few questions, and they let me know that I'm good to go back to work on the next business day, which from now is Monday, so that's all good too. So now that the update's out of the way, let's get into the boosters. President Biden just announced sweeping calls for the booster shot for everybody over the age of 16, to which the FDA responded, uh, pump the brakes, buddy. Let's let the science do the talking. Instead of giving the boosters to everyone, the FDA suggested, well, why don't we just give it to the people who are at high risk of developing severe disease? The FDA cited lack of safety data on the third dose and whether or not the booster was gonna be of any value in the low risk populations. My two cents, I think that's reasonable. So what's up with immunity? A recent study out of Israel just discussed immunity on a huge scale, and I think they did a pretty good job about it. It's um, here and linked down below if you wanna read it. Given the state of medical research these days, many papers, this one included, do not undergo rigorous peer review. Additionally, this study was undertaken when the Delta variant was the predominant variant in Israel. What they found was not particularly surprising, although it hadn't really been elucidated in the literature very well. What they found was if you had COVID, you are less likely to get reinfected than if you had a vaccine to get a breakthrough infection. So they did find that natural immunity is a more robust immunity than vaccines. Now let's pause and think about that for a second. Now I haven't gone into the biochem or the molecular genetics or whatever it is, but this is just kind of what I think. When you get the COVID vaccine, you develop antibodies to the one protein. When you get the virus, you develop immunity to the virus. When you get the virus, you develop immunity to all of the things on the virus, not just the one protein. So if a vaccinated person comes in contact with the virus, they have the one antibody to fight off that one protein, and maybe the virus gets through, maybe it doesn't. But if somebody who's already been infected gets exposed to the virus once again, they have all of those antibodies to try to fight it off. So natural infection is better for immunity than vaccines, so what about both? This study found that if you got the virus, plus one booster shot afterwards, you had better immunity than if you just had coronavirus and not the booster shot. That being said, it was a trend. It did not reach statistical significance, so bear that in mind. And I wanna take another pause here. This is not a suggestion to go get COVID. I've watched far too many people die from it, so don't. But unfortunately, there are no studies on people like me who have been vaccinated and then got a breakthrough infection. Moreover, this study, also out of Israel, again, link down below if you wanna read it, looked at vaccinated versus natural infection and the medical problems that come with them. Now I'm gonna to have to read these differences, but the people who got the virus had more instances than the people who got vaccinated of the following. Acute kidney injury, arrhythmia, deep vein thrombosis, herpes zoster infection or shingles, intracranial hemorrhage, brain bleeds, myocardial infarction or heart attack, and pulmonary embolism or the clot in the lungs. And um, that's the table. So please don't go looking for COVID. It's my belief that the safest course of action is to get vaccinated and then see what happens. Whether or not you get a breakthrough infection, well, time will tell. I did and I'm just fine, but that's an N of one. Whether or not the breakthrough infections will be severe, again, time will tell, but the data certainly suggests that mm, probably not. And certainly your chances of developing severe infection after getting vaccinated are much less than if you hadn't gotten vaccinated. 
So my closing remark is this. Early in COVID, I predicted that everybody would have a date with the virus in some fashion, whether it's an infection or the vaccine. And with the increase in cases, I'm beginning to look more and more correct. What's more, as the case numbers of vaccinated increases, I'm worried that more and more people are gonna get breakthrough infections. Now, I know that there have been 41.3 million positive tests in the United States. If we go conservatively and say there's 33 million positive cases, then we can assume that this is one in 10 people that have had COVID. Again, those are extrapolations. Those aren't official data, so don't quote me on that. That being said, being vaccinated and getting a breakthrough infection causes a much lower risk of severe disease than just a normal infection. So I guess that makes me feel better. Thank you so much for bearing with me as I try to pump out all these videos. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to leave them down below. I love answering questions. Part of the reason why I became a doctor is to impart my knowledge in a way that everybody can understand to everybody, to as many people as I can anyway. So thank you guys so much for your support and I'll see you in the next video.